in this video, we're going to go over the basics of resonance arrows. Now, um, just a disclaimer, resonance takes a good deal of practice before you'll feel confident with it. So it'll be a lot of confusion at first, and you just need to, to stick with it, okay? So um, resonance is this idea that electrons um, can move delocalized electrons specifically can move around a molecule um, and they can exist in different locations. And so we could have structure one here and we could have structure two. And um, we're gonna have a double headed arrow between uh, two resonance structures, okay? That will always be true. Now, what we will also have is we'll have what's called resonance arrows that show the movement of electrons. So here, I'm just gonna draw the arrow and we'll talk about it. We have something that looks like this. And what this uh, is talking about, this is a curved arrow. And um, the arrows represent pairs of electrons moving. Okay, so the tail is where electrons are coming from and the head is where electrons are traveling. So your arrow head, wherever that's moving to, um, this location becomes more negative. Whereas the tail, electrons are leaving that area, uh, this location becomes more positive, okay? So if we look back, and again, it'll be confusing at first, we've got three carbons here. I'm highlighting them. And um, we're gonna take the electrons in this double bond and we're just going to move and notice that the arrow is pointing at the bond so we're going to form a double bond there so from the vantage point of our central carbon nothing has really changed it still has the same number of bonds so notice that its charge does not change but this uh, terminal end on the right end carbon has gained a bond and so this location becomes more negative it was positive so it gains a negative so it'll be neutral this carbon, this first leftmost carbon, loses electrons, and so this location becomes more positive. It was neutral at the beginning, and it's lost electrons, so now it'll be positive. But notice the overall charge was positive, or a plus one, and then we're gonna still go to something that is still overall plus one. So charge, and I'm gonna say overall charge, that way it's clear. Overall charge is conserved with resonance structures. Okay, so there's some rules about resonance arrows. Again, it takes some time to get these rules down. They seem very strange at first, but I promise with effort and just persistence, you'll get it down. Okay, so resonance structures must have all the same atoms connected in the same order. So we're not going to break any single bonds because that's going to make it a chemical reaction and resonance is not a chemical reaction. Okay, so rule number one is we're not going to break a single bond. Row two does not exceed an octet. So remember, uh, Row two elements, they could be 2s2, 2p6, so we can't be any more than eight electrons. And so what that means is we're gonna have a combination of four. So that could be uh, bonds and lone pairs. Each have two electrons, and so if we multiply them by four, then we get eight. So we could have four bonds with zero lone pairs, that is good. We could have three bonds, but then we're going to need one lone pair. We could have two bonds and two lone pairs. Or we could have one bond and three lone pairs. OK, 
okay? All of these are acceptable. If we look here at why some of these arrows are bad, we'll see that they're gonna break this trend, this combination to reach four. So this carbon has one, two, three, four bonds. Notice what they're doing is we're gonna take this lone pair and what they wanna do is create a bond there. Five bonds is not gonna be acceptable for a carbon. Here, uh, we're gonna take a lone pair from oxygen and give it to nitrogen. Nitrogen can have four bonds, but it'd have to have zero lone pairs, and right now it still has that one, so that would be unacceptable. Here, oxygen can have three bonds, but if it's gonna have three bonds, it only needs one lone pair, and it has two, so again, unacceptable. Okay, why is this a bad arrow? For a second, it looks like we're gonna get this, which is looks fine, but what we have to remember is that this carbon already has four bonds, and so by adding a double bond there, we're gonna have five, and again, that would be unacceptable. So that's why it's gonna take some time to get used to this. Okay. So, for each of the problems below, determine whether each curved arrow violates either of the two rules described, uh, and describe the violation. Okay, so we are going to move. Notice it's pointing towards, I want to go over something really quickly because we'll see it. Let's say we have something that looks like this. Our arrow is pointing at the atom. So that means we're going to generate electrons, more a pair of electrons on the atom, okay? So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna minimize that. I didn't worry about charge there. This guy would technically be positive and that would be negative now because this carbon loses electrons, the oxygen gains. Now, if we have something that looks like this, notice that this arrow is pointing at the bond. So what does that create? I forgot a double-headed arrow. It's gonna create a bond. So if we point an arrow at a bond, we're gonna create a bond. If we point an arrow at an atom, we're gonna put a lone pair of electrons on that atom. That's very, very important here. Okay, so let's look at this. This is a uh, bad arrow, and I'm just gonna write bad. N exceeds an octet, okay? Because I already see nitrogen has four bonds. The arrow is pointing at the bond. We can't have five bonds. This looks good because all we're doing, and I, I want to draw what the structure looks like, is we're going to put another lone pair on oxygen. For a second, that might seem weird, but that's totally all right because oxygen has three lone pairs and one bond. Okay, this one is bad. We would create this, which doesn't look bad because one, two, three, four, but there's already a hydrogen there. Carbon would exceed an octet. Okay, same thing here. We've got one, two, three, four. We can't add another bond. Okay, so oxygen exceeds an octet. Same thing here, carbon is going to exceed an octet. Carbon has four bonds here. None of them are with hydrogen. They're very clear. We can't have an extra double bond there. Same thing here, carbon's going to exceed an octet. We can't have this because we have one, two. So we'd have one, two, three, four, five. We cannot have five bonds. That's never gonna happen. Here, this is no good because we're breaking a single bond and that's a chemical reaction, not a resonance. Again, here, this one is actually good. It looks a little bit weird, 
but when I check it out, we get nitrogen negative, but nitrogen can be negative. It gains electrons here, but it has two bonds and two lone pairs, and that totally uh, is okay with our combination to reach four, okay? So that's kind of an important chart to kind of have in the back of your mind. Okay, this one looks good too because nitrogen's going to have one, two, three bonds. And yeah, we're not impacting the carbon. Three bonds in one lone pair, that, that works. This is not any good, nope, because carbon exceeds an octet. And then same thing here, it might look a little strange, but carbon, this guy already has four bonds, so that's no good. Same reason, C exceeds an octet. Okay, now, with multiple arrows, it's going to take some time. Um, and what we want to do is focus on where the arrow begins, okay? So some of these have multiple, some only have one. Um, but what I see here is I want to keep all my single bonds in place, okay, because we don't break single bonds, and I just want to follow my arrow. So I'm going to start with this arrow. Looks like we're forming a double bond here. And then here we're taking an electron or electrons from a double bond and we're going to put them on that carbon so we get something that looks like this. Now we want to be able to conserve charge. So we started out neutral. The whole thing needs to be neutral, but chances are with arrows moving around, there's going to be some charge. Um, so oxygen, this arrow says that it's losing electrons. It'll become positive. And then at the very end, uh, that carbon is gaining electrons, so it'll be negative. And so that's what that resonance structure will look like. Okay. So for each of the structures below, draw the resonance structure indicated by the curved arrows. Okay. Keep my single bonds. It looks like we're taking a double bond, and we're going to move it there. This carbon gains electrons, so it'll be neutral now. This carbon loses electrons, so it'll be positive. Notice that my net charge stays the same. Keep my single bonds. Looks like we're going to create a double bond here. And then we're going to take electrons and put them there. So we'd get something that looks like this. This guy's negative. This guy becomes more positive, that carbon, so it'll be neutral. Okay. And C, again, please keep your single bonds. Okay. We're going to take a lone pair of electrons and make a double bond. And then we're going to take these lone pairs of electron, or those electrons in the double bond and make them a lone pair. So that oxygen will have three lone pairs. This oxygen gains electrons in this process, so it'll be negative. This oxygen loses electrons in the process, so it'll be positive. Okay. Keep my single bonds. We're going to take these lone pairs of electrons and we're going to make a double bond there, okay. And we're going to take these electrons in the double bond, put them on nitrogen, so nitrogen has two lone pairs. That makes this nitrogen negative. This carbon becomes more positive, but since it was negative, it'll be neutral now. Okay, that looks good. Okay. Here, I wish I would have... Here's what I can do, actually. I'm going to copy this. I wish I would have given you more space. I'm going to put it down here. Okay, we're going to get a little bit crazy with some of these arrows. So again, I urge you, keep your single bonds and just follow one arrow at a time. Okay, it looks like we're going to create a double bond here. This double bond... This one moves there. And these electrons, notice it's pointing at the uh, atom, so it's going to be on that carbon, that bottom carbon. And then any double bond like this one that we don't have any arrows messing with, it's just going to stay put. Oxygen ends up losing electrons in this process, and the bottom carbon ends up gaining electrons. And so n overall, we're still neutral.
Again, I'm keeping my single bonds. I'll worry about electrons and all that later. Okay, it looks like we are moving a double bond there. We're gonna then move this double bond to with the nitrogen. And then we're gonna move, and that arrow is not great. It should really be pointing more at the double bond. We're gonna move those electrons onto this oxygen. So this oxygen will have three. Okay, this oxygen was never touched. And then this double bond was never touched. So I think we have a positive charge on the bottom carbon because it ends up losing electrons. And then I think we're going to have a positive on nitrogen because nothing really changes there. We're going to have a negative on this oxygen, and then we're going to have a negative on this oxygen. Overall, it was neutral to begin with, negative and positive, and still we're neutral. Negative, positive, negative, positive. Okay. When we get to a later set of notes, we'll learn like if we're comparing these two, one of them is actually a better resonance structure and exists a little bit more often than the other. And that'd be the top structure because it's minimizing charge a little bit better. Having fewer charges is generally considered better. Okay, for this one, let's keep our single bonds. And it looks like we're gonna create a double bond there and then a single bond here. So we stay like that. And then this one, looks like we're putting electrons on that oxygen and then moving a double bond there. So we get something that looks like this. And then in H, if you had to compare the top structure or the bottom structure, the top structure would be more stable because it minimizes charge, okay? There's no atom that's not neutral there, so that's why it's so stable. Okay, last part here. In each case below, draw the curved arrows required to convert the first resonance structure into the second resonance structure. In each case, begin by drawing all, this should say lone pairs, and then use formal charges to guide you. Okay, so you can pause the video and practice this. Okay, now, one thing that's important is that we're always moving electrons, okay? Either a double bond or lone pairs. We're never moving positive charges in any of these. I did not move a, a positive charge. I mean, a positive charge may have ended up on a different atom, but my arrow does not show. Oftentimes, people will do something like this. They'll say, oh, positive charge goes there, and that, that is not a resonance arrow. We're never going to mess with the positive charges with resonance arrows.